those. We're just going to pour these for the purposes of this video, and then I'll do those later. How about that? So I have a list of all of the um, signs and how many I have to Um, I'm hoping that our feed does better because it keeps saying unable to connect. Do they say that come on or sketchy or glitchy? How is the connection, you guys? We've asked, I don't know how many questions. This is what it looks like if they have a scheduled live. I don't know what that means. Hey, Bubbo. So, um, I have a list of how many of each sign I have to make, which obviously correlates with all the different ladies. So, I need one more of everything except for Virgo, which is this one. I don't need any more of that one. Um, I don't need any more Aquarius. Yeah. I took, no, 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 no. I took these out. Those are still wet. Oh. Um, will you watch over this because it keeps doing the disconnect and just just hit try again should it happen um, no, nobody got kicked out yet that we know of so let's get this party started I'm gonna be using quick coat it does look like a bunch of petri dishes doesn't it I'm going to use Quick Coat for this because I don't have uh, the luxury of a whole bunch of time because these are for this weekend. It doesn't take a whole lot to fill these little suckers. Why would it do that? Like, I don't know, but just hit reconnect. It's such a crappy thing. What was your question? Are you still going to try to drop those into there? How else? Um, super glue? But then they're going to stick out of the back. And then they'd be not very functional as an actual coaster. If you put four on there, it would, or three in the right spot. I don't know. Um... I'm just going to try to drop them in a little late so that they kind of do this. So that there's like exposure and it doesn't sink all the way to the front. And you know that it's going to do that on every single one? Well, if I wait, then it should. It's a coaster. If it sticks to a fridge, I'm, I'm okay. If that it doesn't, I'm okay. sound is echoey. That may have been from the very beginning of the video. Is it okay right now? It could be because the other one. I have a reverb. That's green. Can you guys hear me okay now? I think it's experimental. All right, so while we figure out the mic situation. Connection good here, that's better. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if they're saying. I don't know if they're saying it's better when I asked if it was better when it this was out. So yeah, if they say anything else, then we'll just take it off and I'll speak up for now. So uh, back to the lesson. I am fully mixing Quick Coat Part A and Part B. I'm going to fully 
and completely incorporate both parts. Oh. Okay. So we took the mic out. I don't know what's going on with the phone. We may just have to well, reset. Vamp is the only one that's saying that it's bad. Everybody else said it's a good connection. So I don't know. Okay. Well, can you guys hear me okay since we took the mic out? So I'm going to mix part A and part B just like I would if I was just pouring resin. Just regular. So that means mixing A and B for three minutes, making sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of your cup. I am using Quick Coat because I am on a time crunch and plaster sets up really quickly. So it's for time. If I was doing this in white, I would not use Quick Coat because Quick Coat will yellow. It has no hauls, no UV blockers, resistance. It will yellow 100%. If you use Quick Coat, uh, you can get it from StoneCoatCountertops.com. Use the code YALL, Y A L L, all caps. And um, you'll get a great discount if you use that code and it helps us out. Be particular and be quick when you use Quick Coat. It does not have a long working time and you have to mix a whole bunch of stuff. I thought you said you were mixing this. I am mixing plaster and resin mm. together. Because plaster by itself is pretty brittle, but when you combine it with epoxy, uh, it's way more durable. So once you have your A and B fully mixed up, you can add a color if you like. I'm using pink sherbet from Just Resin. This is an old jar, so it's kind of crusty. Uh, when you mix plaster into resin, it's going to pastel it out a little bit, so maybe add a little bit more pigment. Usually when you mix plaster, you mix water into the plaster and it's three parts water four parts plaster two parts water and three parts plaster but we're going with a majority epoxy or maybe 50 50. either way it's a filler that's going to make everything more durable and more rigid because you know when you do something that's just resin especially something this thin it's gonna be flimsy until it fully cures, which could take up to 30 days. Yeah, but using that quick coat, like you really have to work fast, right? You do have to work fast with quick coat. So this is eight ounces of quick coat and probably three ounces of plaster so far. I'm not pouring it all in there to start with because this is gonna get dusty. So you just have to fold it in. I'm almost using the plaster as a thickening agent and a durability agent. I always put the plaster in the cup first so that when you mix your resin with it, it doesn't just puff out at you, kind of like when you mix a powder pigment with your resin. A lot of people recommend um, sifting your plaster before using it to make sure there's no chunks. That's a great idea. I do not have the time to do that and it's just going to have to be good enough this way. I'm going to mix some plaster into this little cup and then I'm gonna combine them. Look at the bubbles. It's crazy like the air bubbles are popping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make it just very thick. Okay, then we'll mix 
this one. Maybe too much powder for that little part. This is a pretty messy, probably should not breathe in plaster, so just be advised. I think I will load up car. Are you free in 15 minutes or so, JB? Uh, she's bringing me some stuff for girls weekend. So we're going to make sure everything's all incorporated. I don't know how that's not being hot right now. Well, it's a 15 minute open time. So we've been like 15 minutes. <laughs> well, we didn't start mixing the resin right when we started, right? Or no, it's going to start getting warm here in a minute. Uh, try not to breathe in plaster, wear protective gear for your own body. Um, this gets really thick and hard to stir, and you'll know it's go time. Uh, I may have made too much for just these, so I might fill a popsicle. It just looks like big pink pancakes, or small pink pancakes, rather. And so this will take about two hours to set up, and then I can pop them out and... Does it expand? You know, I thought oh, it would. I really thought it would using Quick Coat, it. but it, it doesn't. It, well, it didn't. It hasn't. So like I was saying before, you're gonna to wanna to heat this to get rid of some of those bubbles, but do not use a torch because um, it's a horrible idea. A torch, you risk melting the edges of your piece. Somebody wants to know why you're mixing resin into plaster. So I'm mixing resin into plaster to make the piece is more durable. And more rigid. So if I were to just, let me pour this into this other mold real quick before I lose my working time. And I will explain my thought process for mixing plaster into resin. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to think and hurry at the same time without making a mistake. I was doing research when I had someone requesting like 40 of these popsicle molds and um, they didn't have that long of a turnaround time. They needed them rather quickly. So I didn't have time to do them and let the resin cure fully. It, it just wouldn't have made it in shipping. So I researched ways to make resin more durable. And one of the ways- Resin more durable? I mean, uh, resin more sturdy. And I read about adding plaster. I made a bunch of these using just plaster and the wind could blow funny and plaster will chip or break and so to make plaster more durable and to make resin kind of work better for what I needed you just combine them easy peasy um, will you heat gun this for me so we've done a lot of molds in our resin career and let me tell you hitting any bit even for just a second with fire especially if it's a cheaper mold will melt it and so when you try to pull your piece out of the mold it'll be bonded which is bizarre because 
some of your white specs. Silicone's supposed to be awesome for work with resin. So that wasn't fun. Um, we'll just put this one in there. Sweet. This that would work for dominoes. It would work for dominoes. Oh, for sure would work for dominoes. Okay, so um, if this was just resin and it was this thin and I pulled it out of the mold and went like this, it would have a bow in it, a really bad, like it would go whirl. But since I have plaster in it, it's solid. I don't have to worry about it warping or bending. It just won't. I'm, I'm not gonna try, it. I'm not gonna try too hard, but any amount of pressure when you have resin this thin will bend. So, yeah. Um, another thing you can do to get bubbles out of your piece is to get something that vibrates. I'm going to leave that with you guys. But uh, like this sander, uh, you turn it on and just lay it on the table and it'll vibrate everything and help bubbles work its way out of the piece. So now that I have these poured... I should have dropped these in when they were at this consistency. Drop my little magnets. Hindsight. But yeah. So now that I have some of these demolded, I decided I was gonna paint in the stars and all of that with gold. But it's kind of hard to see, but whatevs so to do that jeff may have to zoom in a pinch i'm gonna use some liquid gold from montana i have some in our shop it's called mtn liquid gold if you just want to try like uh, 10 ounces or five ounces and i'm going to use Uh, a paintbrush that has a pretty fine point on it because I'm going to try to paint in it's a wet brush oh is that too too much yeah I can control a liner brush. Ah, perfect. Even better. I'm using this ultra fine point. She's just showing off the ring. I'm just showing off the ring. Did you guys know I'm married to my love, Jeff, cameraman? Mm mm. Okay. okay. So I poured a little bit of this liquid gold from Montana. This this stuff is basically just spray paint that isn't in a spray can. So I'm gonna load up a little bit of paint and try to do this so you guys can see. And just work it into these little designs. I thought about I thought about um, doing that dust on idea with powdered mica, but I didn't want that powder to travel. I just would want it on these like high points, and I wasn't sure if that was at all possible, so. I just went with this route. I could probably also use a fine point marker if I could find one fine pointy enough. Toothpicks. Ooh, great idea. Who was that, Karen? 
toothpicks are a great idea. If you don't have a really fine liner brush, um, this one is Transcend Art Brush number zero, but it also says N200 on it. I don't know what that means, but that's what this specific brush is. So I'm going to be doing this for 27 coasters, which is fine because family. Um, with this liquid gold, you kind of have to work a little bit quicker too, so that it doesn't gunk up your paintbrush. To clean this off of your paintbrush, you need to use, what do you think, the acetone or what? Uh, would alcohol work fine to clean this brush? Both. Start with acetone? Last star. And that's how I'm going to do it. I'm hoping that when I drop the magnets into um, let me put this in the acetone. I don't know where it is. When I finally drop the magnets in that they don't sink all the way to the face of the piece because it kind of sucks, but is what it is. I dropped this one in at probably one hour mark. So I'm going to keep an eye on these and probably drop it in the one hour mark as well. So I'll probably finish all the rest of these just in case I end up having to use them. Stinky magnets. But like I said, this is a great way to make plaster more durable and resin not so floppy when you're doing molds. I'm telling you, if you guys have never done resin in a mold that's this thin, it would be, I could just hold it like this and it would be like burr, burr, burr. So yeah, that's a great hack to make your everything more durable. I'm just using regular Plaster of Paris. It comes, I think this is a 10 pound bag and then nope this one quick coat so do you guys have decanted spray paint exactly uh do you guys have any questions So Karen, um, no, after resin cures full 30 days, it should not be, um, bendy or warp, but if it gets hot, it could still bend and warp even after a 30 day cure. But, um, I have to have these done this weekend, so I don't have the luxury of waiting a full 30 days. And if you're trying to, um, do this for a client and they need it shipped sooner rather than later Whoa. then um you really want it to be a little bit more durable is your client wanting them to be coasters or magnets uh, a little bit of both so i'm making a little bit of both how and deep is that mold? my client is my aunt uh yeah client is just aunt um i would say this is 
quarter inch, maybe a little bit over a quarter inch. How thick do you think? Quarter inch? It's about a quarter inch. Hi, Betty. So today I'm making uh, molds that are also, I mean, coasters that are also magnets. But I messed up on my first few and dropped my magnets in too soon. Great point, Vamp. Three millimeters. So, you're so going to try this when you get home. I have a three-tier tray mold that wasn't using because it was too thin. Awesome, Daphne. Give it a shot. You can order plaster off of Amazon. Use our link down in the description box below this video. Doink, doink, doink. And get you some plaster so that your um, so that your Everything is more durable. You're going to be at RK3 tomorrow. I wish we were going to be down there. I think Rhonda's still in like Alaska. Alaska? I think they're in Alaska. What? Or maybe they're back already. I have no idea. She was on a trip. You have plaster at home already? Awesome, Daphne. You're already prepared. Do you sell the round molds through your shop? Jan, I don't have these in our shop. I could carry them, but honestly, they are on Amazon. In fact, I can go ahead and add them to Amazon, our shop that's listed down below this video real quick for you. Let me just, I'm just looking it up on my phone real quick. Orders. Apparently we ordered too much stuff over Amazon Prime. Oh, there it is. So it was, you could use regular stone coat, Ida. You would just, um, it would take a little bit longer to cure. So this is what the listing looks like from Resin Go. Oh, it's on sale and has extra 5% off. So let me add it to our Amazon shop. And there it is. So in our Amazon storefront, it has all the stuff that we use on our channel that we don't carry in our shop. So everything from paint to USB sticks, there's the plaster, uh, my leggings apparently, the heat gun that we use, all of it, all of it's in there. So you can click that link down below this video and it super helps us when you guys use our link. So yeah. Oh, you are super, super welcome for this handy dandy tip to make your resin molds um, more sturdy and your plaster more durable. So I gotta go to finish sending out some orders for you guys. Thank you for buying from our small business, our resin shop. It helps us more than I can even put into words. How much plaster do you add to the resin? I missed that part. So Daphne, I mixed eight ounces of resin and then put in probably in total, I probably did about six ounces of plaster. <laughs> So that's what I did because I think anything more than that makes the resin too hard to mix in. The instructions on the box say two parts water to three parts plaster. You can do that um, measurement mixture. Just don't put water if you're using resin, okay? I repeat, do not put water if you're using resin. Resin and water do not like each other. They don't hang out and they don't text. Okay, bad idea. So I just mix enough plaster in till it's almost too difficult to stir anymore. Make sure your resin is fully mixed, your part A and part B before you add the plaster. 
Then add the color you wanna use. If you wanna color at all, you can just let it be white because plaster will make it white and then paint it after that. But if you do that, uh, you'll probably have to coat it with epoxy or um, a UTC or a polycrylic, something like that before you can use it because your paint will chip off. Uh, so yeah, I said all that to say I'd mixed eight ounces of resin and I put about six ounces of plaster in there. It would have come in handy for the 100 bracelets you did. Well, for the next 100 bracelet order, I hope it helps. Yeah, so I just put the plaster powder, not a plaster mixture with water. Don't do that. No water. Just plaster powder into your resin mixture. Thanks, Evelyn. I hope you do too. Thank you, Claire, for all the links. Yeah, so you mix A and B of your resin, add whatever color, if you wanna add a color, then mix your plaster powder in. And then that's all it takes to get something super sturdy and not at all floppy. Perfectly straight. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Hope it was entertaining, or educational, or informative in some form or fashion. I will be dropping these magnets in in about 30 minutes. And yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember, we do the test. So you guys don't have to. I was going to show you Bowie, but he didn't, he didn't come over to say hi to me today. So, uh, support our shop, buy some pigments from us, share our videos, leave us a like and have an awesome day. Y'all are great. Till next time. Bye. I said bye.